Today in the Joy of Editing, we're going to get a look at the latest update for Topaz Gigapixel. This is version 8.3. You can now recover old photos faster with their latest version of Recover. This is Recover version 2. Let's check it out. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'm excited to check out this latest update for Topaz Gigapixel. This is version 8.3. Now, there's since been a couple updates. I'll click on this. Two updates available. This update, version 8.3.2, fixed crash when loading raw or non-RGB images. I didn't update to that yet. But today, I want to show you this new version 2 recover model. I have two examples for you, some old photographs that I've scanned. I want to compare those to version 1, and I also want to give you times it took with version 2 compared to version 1, so you can see how much faster it is, at least on my computer. I'm using a later model computer. It's a Mac Studio with an M2 Ultra chip. Now, times will vary per computer. Now, if you have an older computer, it may not be worth doing it on your computer, but then you could go and use cloud credits if needed. But if you have a newer computer, you may not need to go that way. Now, I have two different examples for you, and at the end of this video, I will show you my results, and we'll also compare version 1 to version 2, just so we can see the differences, and we'll also compare the time it took on version 1 versus version 2. By the way, there is a flash sale going on over at the Topaz Labs web store. You can save $15 off Topaz Gigapixel. Also, if you've never tried Gigapixel, you could try a free trial. I do have an affiliate link in the description below this video that'll take you over to the web store. When you use my link, I make a small commission, and this helps to support the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. So when you use my link, I really appreciate it. By the way, this sale goes on till April 9th, 2025. So if you're interested, take advantage of it. Well, let's go ahead and get started. I have two different examples for you. I'm here in Photoshop, but I just want to show you. These are my pixel dimensions right here, 736 by 1024, so it's a small image. And the other example I have for you is another image, which is 747 by 1007 pixels. Now, I've scanned both of these images on an inexpensive scanner printer. We'll start out with this image. And as you can see, it's 736 by 1024 pixels. I'm upscaling it six times, so when it's done, it'll be 4416 by 6144 pixels. On the right side of the Gigapixel interface, this is where we select a model. You know, you could pick standard high fidelity, low res, text and shapes, art and CG. And then we have these new generative models. We have Recover version 2. And if I click right here, you'll note we also have recover version one. If I go back, you also note we have a redefined model, which I'm not covering on this video, but for recovering photographs, you definitely want to use the recover model to breathe some new life into those old photos. Now for this image, I have two faces. So you want to make sure you turn face recovery on. So click this button right here and select faces to recover. We find these two faces become highlighted. You could click to shut a face off if you don't want it. Click to turn it back on and then just click apply. So we have two faces selected. I'm using generation two face recovery and my setting is at 81. Now I'm going to show you my workflow for recover. So what I like to start out with is if we come down to the left hand bottom side of the interface, we have preview controls, small, medium, and large. I mostly use small. And you see this box, I can click here and render a sample out. And I'll let this run in real time just so you can see how long this actually takes on my computer. If you have an older computer, it may take longer. Now the reason I choose a small box, because the smaller the box, the less time it takes to render. And if I want to, I could come and click on the baby's face. And now we can see this result. Now, here's a little trick. If you look at those two square boxes, if I hold down my space bar, you can see there's the before and there's the after. Now, it's done a really good job. Now, you can always come here and change this detail adjustment to any adjustment you like, or you could click on the lightning bolt and get an auto adjustment. For me, I find that when I take the detail down to one, I really like the results I get there versus putting it up too high. Now at this point, I could just click export image or I could come down here and click clear. This is the way I like to do it. I like to click clear 
and then click on preview entire image. And it's going to give me a calculated time here, how long it's going to take. And as you can see right there, it's saying like 20 seconds. It actually took a little bit longer. Now it changed to a minute. I'm not going to make you wait this out. When this render is done, I'll tell you the exact time. And as you can see here, it took exactly one minute and 10 seconds. I'll click on done. And here is my final result. And it's done a really good job. I'll hold down my space bar. Here's before and here's after. So pretty nice. We're going to go into Photoshop and do some pixel peeping. I also ran it under version one so we can compare that. So hang until the end of this video to see all that. And we'll compare the times also. Now, as I said, you could take this detail slider and we can drag this up and see the effect as I drag it up, like say to 100% which looks not very good. And now if I take it back down to one, you can see what it looks like there. I think one looks most realistic. If I zoom into this image, we can take a look here. Like look at the hair up here at one. Now let me drag it up to 100%. And you can see some weirdness up in here and you can see some patterns in here. But if I take it down to one, I think it looks a whole lot better and a lot more realistic. And now we can come down and look in this area here. So everything looks good. We brought out a lot of nice detail. Is it perfect? No, but it's pretty darn good, I must admit. And now let me go to fit the screen so you can see the entire image. I'll hold down the space bar. Here's before and here's after. Pretty nice. Now, by the way, if we look down here to the bottom right-hand side of the interface, if we were to render this in the cloud, it would take approximately 14 seconds, give or take. If you have an older computer, if this is not working on your computer, or it's taking way too long, you can use your cloud credit. And that is really fast, but it does cost money. Now I've already rendered this image, so at this point I can just click export image and I'm going to send it back to the original folder. I'll preserve the input format which was JPEG and color space. I'll preserve the input color space. Now I turned on this switch to add applied filters to file name and I'm adding a suffix of gigapixel. And if you'll note the file name structure, it says gigapixel recover version two, six times upscaling facial AI version two. And now at this point I just click on save and it'll save out like almost instantaneously and it's done. I'm gonna go ahead and close this window. Now, if I wouldn't have previewed the entire image before export, the export would have taken longer. Now, the reason I like to preview the entire image this way, I could study the image and I can adjust my detail accordingly and then export it. So this is my workflow when I'm working with Recover in Gigapixel. Now I have one more image. I'm gonna come down here, see the little up arrow. If you click right here, you can see the thumbnails of the images that are loaded up. I'm gonna click on this second image right here. Now this image, I've already done this image, so I'm not gonna take the time and do it here in Gigapixel. Next up, we're gonna go into Photoshop and we'll do a little bit of pixel peeping and we'll talk about the time it took for the different versions. And now here we are in Photoshop. Now this is the original image, 736 by 1024 pixels. Let me click on recover version one. Now I didn't show you recover version one when I was in Gigapixel, but let me turn it on. This is recover version one and it looks pretty good. Now it's 6X upscale, recover version one. The time was 11 minutes and 30 seconds on my computer. Now here is the new pixel dimensions, 4416 by 6144. And so it took quite a bit longer than version two. So now let me show you version two. So look at version one, I'll turn on recover version two. That's what it looks like. And note here, it was eight times faster than version one to make the render. So that's pretty good. It's a 6X upscale. This is recover version two. The time was one minute and 30 seconds as opposed to 11 minutes and 30 seconds. I went ahead and zoomed way in. This is version one. So you can really see it here. And it's done a really nice job. Now let's compare that to version two. Let me turn on version two. This is version two. You know what's a lot cleaner? It looks sharper. There's a little bit of red in the eyes here that I'm not noticing here in version one, but overall the sharpness is better. I like the way it's handling the background better. Okay, so now we see the baby. Let me shut off version two. Now here's version one versus version two. Version two definitely looks better. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. And now let's move on to the second example. Now this image started out at 747 by 
1007 pixels, and it was also upscaled six times. So let me show you Recover version one first. Here's Recover version one. Six times upscale, time 11 minutes and 17 seconds, and it's upscaled to 4482 by 6042 pixels. So this is version one. Now look at the image. Let me turn on Recover version two. This is Recover version two. Now this was 10 times faster than version one. The pixel size is the same. Now let's compare this, which is version two, to version one. So this is version one, this is version two. Not quite the dramatic difference as the first example, but one more time, let me shut off Recover version two. This is version one, and now version two. I do believe version two has a slight edge over version one. What do you think? Leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. I went ahead and zoomed in for some pixel peeping. This is version one, and now let me turn on version two. Here's version two. Again, version one, version two. I think version two is a little sharper. I like the way it handled the face better. Let's look at the dress. This is version two. Here's version one. There's a lot of different artifacts and things in here. And now let's go to version two. We still have the artifacts, but it's a lot more natural looking in my opinion. Now we're still on version two. Let's look over in this area, version two versus version one. This is version two. Okay, a little bit of artifacts over here, but all in all, I think it's done a pretty darn good job. What do you think? Well, I got to say this, version two is really a whole lot faster. Now, just in case you're wondering, what does this image look like before version two gets applied to it? Well, I'll hold down my space bar. It looks like this. And now it looks like this after version two. So as you can see, it does a really good job. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's first look at Gigapixel version 8.3. If you did, please give this video a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.